basically when I got invited to be here, I came to pledge my support to join the campaign. And briefly, since now I've made it here, briefly I'll touch upon a couple of points that's very dear, close to my heart. Since I have been in media business for the last three years, there are a couple of points that I want to make about the role of media. In fact, if we actually look at the Northeast region, I, perhaps all of us will recall the incident at or on GS Road. Perhaps that brought about a huge amount of uh, condemnation about the way the media was projecting the event, especially the way two channel photo over the entire game, basically for the TRP and GRP, which was very, very unfortunate. But one thing that I've observed that in the three years that I've spent in the region, because the last 17 years I was in Delhi NCR, perhaps, you know, we are evolving, we are doing a good job, because I'm an eternal optimist, I would say so, but at the same time, it's about time that most of the channel owners or the publishers need to intervene many a times because we, most of the journalists, especially the young journalists, uh, are going overboard at, uh, you know, on many occasions. And among the senior journalists also, because I have one personal experience which I would like to share, is that you know, we are trying to uh, groom a lot of young journalists. At the same time, there are a lot of errors committed here and there. You know, before I make this, uh, share this anecdote or the incident, I'd like to make it clear that today, as on today in our national, I have, I am the biggest employer of the females in the team. In fact, for the last one month, I have been traveling and the entire business is managed by a, a lady colleague uh, who is a professional. So I don't have to worry about, I trust ladies, they can deliver, they are as good as men folks. But at the same time, if I have to look, on an average, if I have to look at couple of things, you know, one is, let's, let's not get emotive about it, let's be factual about it. One, please, ladies, you know, if you are striving and if you are asking for equality, please think of working as hard as men folks are. I know there are security issues as far as late night working is concerned that should be left to the, to the, to the publisher or to the, to the management of the office to take care of, but at the same time, they need to be as hardworking and as sincere as other colleagues in the office. You know, based on my first three recruits, my ladies were so good that I thought of recruiting more because I found them to be very sincere, very hardworking. But after that, it miserably failed despite the same environment, perhaps environment improved in the office. So I put up, uh, I had put out an advertisement saying that uh, male journalists may apply if female thinks uh, uh, females can take the job seriously, they may apply so. Perhaps, then a lot of people took offense on that. In fact, I got a notice from the Women, State Women Commission and I was called for explanation. I did that as well, but at the same time, I explained to the commission also in detail the background because I had at least about 60% of my employees as female. So one, I thought of bringing about some parity in terms of uh, sex ratio in the office, one. Two, based on my experience, even I wanted some changes. And third, and this particular ad was put up by one of the lady journalists from the region on the media watchdog called The Hoot, the, the website. And with some introductory line and remarks on that, perhaps without understanding the context and the background. Now, my point is, let's get factual about it. What's the ground reality? Let's not get emotive about it. That, you know, okay, there is particular crime that has happened. Now, here also, now even today, all the media that has been crying foul about a lot of crime against women, I don't deny it, it's happening, really happening. But at the same time, the way it's being presented, perhaps it needs to be toned down a bit. Uh, more because a lot of shouting business is going on, which I personally don't endorse. And, you know, the way we are going about is that since morning also we talked about policing, we talked about the political will, but at the same time, personally, I believe it's a social issue, of course, uh, with a collateral impact from both uh, administration as well as the political establishment, because at the end of the day, governance is not just about uh, political leaders, governance is not just about a police administration, governance is all about social, political, and uh, business leaders coming together and bringing about prosperity, peace, and progress in the society. So, because personally, I believe, I have grown up uh, 
uh, I've been brought up by my mother, I mean, uh, one, two, uh, my father was never around because he was serving in interiors. Number two, when I was growing up, I was always taken care of by my sisters. Number three, then I had a girlfriend. Number four, now even today, I'm, you know, I don't do anything without take counseling, take, uh, uh, after, without consulting my wife. You know, so all these factors are there that helps bring about a mindset change in men's life. And as recent as uh, January, you know, I called my six years old daughter, Beta Idarana. My daughter said, Ab Abo, in my language, Abo means father. Abo, I'm not a son, I'm a son. You know, that's the kind of sensitivity, you know, people have developed. Each individual, each child has started developing. I think perhaps in our society, you know, it's not a big deal. We had such a wonderful natak this, uh, since morning I saw the first and afternoon I saw the second one. I'm in the same program. So let me tell you, when I went to Delhi for the first time, I was in a hostel in Shriram College of Commerce, and my room was on the first floor in the corner, and which was overlooking a swimming pool. And those that Shriram College of Commerce used to be the only college with a swimming pool. At 3 o'clock right in the evening, all the seniors used to be on a balcony, and being a fresher, we didn't dare to come out and hang around with the seniors. But it took me one and a half months to figure out what actually the seniors were doing in the, in, the, in the first floor balcony overlooking the swimming pool. After one and a half months, two months, I figured out that there's a time when the ladies, the girls from the Delhi University, other hostels from IP College and, and Dolatram College used to come and take bath in the swimming pool. So, but for a person like me, a tribal coming from the region where open bathing is commonplace, it was, it was nothing. So there are social issues that we, all of us need to get on with, but at the same time, as insofar as the role, role of media is concerned, I think my request, I'm, I'm sharing these few anecdotes so that you know we can see the things in a different perspective because different places, different people have different experiences. But at the same time, as a media person, we need to be very careful of how we report it because even seniors are doing it, but more so in the region where all the youngsters are now coming up, media, I think most of the journalists, especially electronic channels, have the first generation reporters working and we need to be very, very careful about it. And with this uh, word of caution from me, I know it's too big a statement coming from me, who's, who's, who's uh, I think perhaps in the entire panelists, I think perhaps I must be the youngest, but I would, I would, I would say so. But at the same time, my request to all the panelists, as all the seniors who are here and who have been here, my request to all the media uh, friends, I think we need to be more careful in the way we report the entire event. Thank you so much.